In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's a, always a blessing to be here at the Carmelite Monastery um, of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel. Uh, and many don't know that this order, uh, even before coming, uh, was, was established even before the coming of Christ. And the roots of this order go back almost 3,000 years to the time of the prophets Elijah and Elisha. Elijah and, uh, Elisa, uh, Elijah and Elisha, the prophet that, uh, that prayed uh, for fire to come down from heaven to defeat the idolaters of Baal, uh, and o- also prayed for the drought which lasted for three and a half years. And when, the, when it came time to pray for rain, he prayed seven times on Mount Carmel, and a cloud shaped like a foot appeared off the coast of the sea and brought rain to, and brought rain to end the drought. And Elijah saw in, the, in this cloud an image of the foot of the woman in Genesis 3.15 who would crush the head of the serpent. Even more so, rising high above the bitter, salty sea, This cloud was filled with pure, fresh water and would be an image of her future immaculate conception. Elijah, we know, did not die, but will return at the end of time to preach against the Antichrist. He was taken up into a fiery chariot and left behind his garment to his disciple Elisha, thus passing on his spirit. And this garment had the power, as we see, one time when Elijah went across, it had power, when he went across the sea, the river Jordan, he took his mantle off, touched the river uh, with the mantle, and stopped the river from flowing so he could cross. And we see that in the book of Kings. And Elijah, uh, Elijah, many, many holy fathers assert, was the author of the monastic discipline. And so the successors of Elijah and Elisha remained on Mount Carmel, living in hollowed-out caves for nearly a thousand years until the coming of Christ. And this was confirmed in several bulls uh, of several popes. So Pope Sixtus IV, Julius II, Gregory XIII, Clement VIII, uh, all confirm the sacred order of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel are the lawful successors of the holy prophets Elijah and Elisha. It is even said that these hermits in the caves of Mount Carmel knew the family of Saint Anne, the mother of Our Lady, and knew Our Lady herself, the mother of our Savior, having awaited her coming, coming ever since Elijah saw her sign in the cloud. And this is why the Carmelites are also called the Brothers of the Blessed Virgin of Mount Carmel. They were present at Pentecost and were baptized by Peter and remained in Mount Carmel up until the time of the Crusades when they were driven out by Muslim persecution. They went west into Europe and are totally and are today are known as the Carmelites. And these Carmelites were especially present in Sicily. Italy and England, uh, being where in 1165, the saint of today, St. Simon Stock, in the year of 12, um, where we, that's where he was born, and the year 1245 was elected general of the Order of the Carmelites. St. Simon Stock had already been a hermit, having lived in a hallowed, hallowed out decayed oak tree from the age of 12. And that's where we, we get the name of Stock, St. Simon Stock, which, comes, which means tree trunk. In the year 1251, the Carmelite order was experiencing many external pre- uh, persecutions and internal difficulties and faced with enormous challenges. And the general of the order, St. Simon Stock, who is then in his 90s, at he is... At, at he is at, as he had always done, implored the help of the Blessed Mother. And he was a poet and composed many anthems and prayers to the Mother of God. And it was on July 16th, 1251, where where he was bowed down in prayer under the weight of many burdens and of his struggling order he prayed. 
what, what many say is one of the most beautiful prayers to Our Lady, the, the Flos Carmeli, which is called the, the Flower of Carmel. At this prayer, Our Lady appeared to him in the company of many thousands of angels, recalling when Elijah, the founder of the Carmelite order, left his garment to Elijah, Alicia. Our Lady appeared with her garment and gave it to Saint Simon and said, Receive, most beloved son, the scapular of the order, a sign of my confraternity, a privilege both to thee and to the Carmelites, which he that die, sh which he that die shall not suffer eternal fire. Behold the sign of salvation, a safeguard in dangers, the covenant of peace, and an everlasting alliance. And so having said this, she left the sacred garment in his hands and vanished. So the promise being made to Saint Simon by Our Lady is that anyone who dies wearing this garment will not go to hell. And almost immediately after this, there's a complete re re reversal of the attitude towards the Carmelites. In 1252, King Henry III issues letters of royal protection and even the Pope issued letters to all the archbishops and bishops, exhorting them to treat the charity, treat, treat with charity the hermits of St. Mary of Mount Carmel, and they receive land, grants, and monasteries. The confraternity is established by St. Simon Stock himself, and the scapular becomes the official habit of the order. And very shortly after that, Granting an, another incredible grace, the Blessed Mother returned, this time to Pope John the 22nd, announcing what's known as the Sabantine privilege. And so she told him, As a tender mother, I will descend into purgatory on the Saturday after their death and will deliver them into the heavenly mansions of life everlasting. That's, that's the promise. And the privilege was promulgated through the papal bull in 1322, given definitive confirmation by the Holy See in 1908. And so the privilege has three conditions, uh, which, which should be, you know, can be easily met. And the first is to wear the brown scapular. The second is to observe chastity according to one's state in life. And the third is to pray the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary every day. But this can also be fulfilled by praying the rosary, uh, if you're given permission to do so, um, by a priest. So I could do that after Mass. Um, now we should see something very familiar here uh, when we think about the Lady, the messages of Our Lady of Fatima. When Lucia asked Our Lady about a certain girl who died, Our Lady said to her, she will be in purgatory until the end of the world. And that's a shocking statement that, that Our Lady tells us that this poor soul who was not completing uh, the necessary requirements of, to gain the Sabbatine privilege, if so, she would have been taken out of purgatory the first Saturday after her death. And so this promise to rescue our souls from purgatory on the first Saturday should remind us of Our Lady's request to, get, to complete the first five Saturday devotion in reparation for the sins committed against her Immaculate Heart. She exhorted us at Fatima in 1917 to pray the rosary every day, to observe chastity, and as she told the shepherd children, because she, as she told the shepherd children, because more souls go to hell, she said, for sins of the flesh than any other sin. But do many know that in the final apparition on October 13th, during the miracle of the sun, where the sun danced and appeared to fall to the earth in front of 70,000 witnesses, that she appeared as Our Lady of Mount Carmel. In fact, she'd done the same thing at Lourdes in the final apparition on the anniversary of the apparition to St. Simon Stock. She also appeared to St. Bernadette as Our Lady of Mount Carmel. So what is Our Lady trying to tell us 
in our times. In 1950, a Carmelite, Father Howard Rafferty, traveled to the convent in Portugal and interviewed now Sister Lucia, a Carmelite herself, about the brown scapular to get the answer. He asked her specifically about this apparition of Our Lady of Mount Carmel during the miracle of the sun and, and its significant, significance. And so he asked her, why did Our Lady come that way? What did she mean? Sister Lucia answered, she meant that we should wear the scapular. And he said, how do you know that? She said, Father, I saw the Blessed Mother and I know what she meant. If I misinterpreted, misinterpreted her message or had had a different idea than she wanted me to have, Our Lady would have spoken about the scapular. To make sure I tried, the, the priest again asked her, he said, to make sure I tried to phrase the same question in different ways. And so he said, I'm going back to America. Everyone in America believes that there are four conditions of the Fatima message. First of all, that we are to say the rosary every day. Secondly, that we're to offer sacrifice of our daily life. Thirdly, that we're to make communion of reparation on the first Saturdays. And finally, that we are, ourselves to, con we are to consecrate ourselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And Sister Lucia concluded, there is one more condition, the wearing of the scapular, the symbol of our consecration. And so we see in our times how important is this gift of Our Lady given to St. Simon Stock for the whole world. It's an integral part of bringing about the triumph of the Immaculate Heart that can only come about by enough people living the Fatima message. For nearly 800 years, this has been the most powerful sacramental in the church. Nothing holds the promise of eternal salvation simply by wearing it. In 800 years, this sacramental has saved souls from drowning. It's been thrown into the ocean to stop the raging storms of the sea. It saved souls from explosions where the clothes were burnt off of people but the scapula remained untouched from plane crashes and gunshots where the bullets would have crushed and flat where have been where the bullets have been crushed and flattened by the scapular saving the persons from a fatal wound it has been a safeguard against lightning strikes strikes poisonings and droughts princes have won battles by donning the scapular and giving children saved from falling out of moving cars, and of course protection from all sorts of diabolical attacks. And one day, Venerable Francis uh, Yepes, who's um, it's actually, um, Saint um, John of the Cross's brother, uh, when his scapular fell off, fell off, as he replaced it, the devil howled at him and said, take off the habit which snatches so many souls from us. So what, what do we learn from all this? But one would be a fool not knowing the power of the sacramental and the promises attached to it not to wear it. And one would be lacking in charity knowing about it and not giving it to as many people as, as possible. This is especially true for someone who we wish to convert. If someone commits to wearing the scapular, we think you know, one, or, one of two things will happen. They will convert and not die in mortal sin, or they will refuse to, ch to change, and they will take off the scapular before death. Our, lady, our Lady's promise stands, and her promise is true. And so after Mass, um, in addition to the veneration of the, the class, the um, the relic of St. Simon Stock will have uh, hundreds of brown scapulars here, and I'll breast them according to the traditional blessing and uh, invest people if you're, if you're not invested. Uh, and all who would like to receive a brown scapular and be in invested, again, they could do so. And you could take as many uh, scapulars as you like, your pamphlets. And um, just to close with one more thought, 
Uh, it's said uh, that Our Lady, by trade, was a seamstress. And as St. Joseph was a carpenter, um, Our Lady made garments. And, the th and she made one thing for our Lord, that our Lord, uh, the only one thing that our Lord really owned would be his seamless garment. And the one that cured women just by touching it. The one soaked with blood, with the blood of redemption. Our Lady has made a garment for you too. Her garment, the one that signifies that you belong to her. The symbol of your consecration to her. The sign of your salvation. Let us pray to her the prayer of St. Simon Stock, which preceded this great gift of the scapular, as we venerate his relic and receive her garments as he did. Let us bring to her all of our wants and needs. And so the prayer he played, prayed, O beautiful flower of Carmel, most fruitful vine, splendor of heaven, holy and singular, who brought forth the Son of God, still ever remaining a pure virgin, assist me in this necessity. O star of the sea, help and protect me. Show me that thou art my mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.